child to it. I was raised in a log house that was built because Bangal Dam went in and flooded all the valley. My grandpa built it. And eventually we had to move in because grandpa got old. He was a lot older than my grandma. She was in a wheelchair and they needed help. So my mom and dad and I moved in. And after the war, my uncle Don moved in. World War II, he was a sergeant. We just found out within the last few months that he won five bronze stars. Of course, he never talked about it. But my daddy died when I was 12, and Uncle Don was probably my savior. It's, um, this night's sort of about relationships, and he was fantastic. He was like the Pied Piper. All the kids loved him. If we were all in a room, the kids would rush to Uncle Don before their own parents. And he was an outdoorsman. He loved to hunt, and he actually was the one that taught me how to fish by putting a hula hoop, or I think it was a tire actually, putting a clothespin on a fishing pole and teaching me how to cast with a no-zip wheel, and I got pretty darn good at it. <laughs> um, we would go for walks in the woods. There was a stream, and especially in the spring, it would be bubbling and rushing, and there was a tree that was curved, and we took turns sitting on that tree, not saying anything, we didn't need to, and the other one would sit on the mossy bank, and when it was my turn to sit on the mossy bank, he taught me to get the twigs from the trees, take the top off the acorn, and I had a hat shop. And then we would go to the pond. I loved the pond. There were cedars all around it, and we would sit there, watch frogs jump in, and you know those insects that kind of skim the place? They would be all over, and I thought that was great, but he was going to teach me how to skip a rock across the pond. He was an athlete, he was a baseball player. And of course, we would pick out the smoothest, nicest rock. And he would do that sideways motion and go boop, 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 all across the pond. It was awesome. And I had picked out this wonderful rock. And I would do the sideways motion. Plunk. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Plunk. Boop, 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 boop. Plunk. But you know what? What he told me, as in typical Uncle Don fashion, you know what? You are the best rock plunker in Camden County. <laughs> and I was happy. I thought it was fantastic. And then we would go on deeper into the woods. I could, at that time, I couldn't now, I could identify every tree from a black oak to a post oak, ash, whatever was back there. And another thing, he taught me, and that relates to the poem I'm going to read. He taught me how to ride down a tree. Any of you ever done that? Shimmy up the tree, you grab the top, and you let yourself down. The poem I'm going to read tonight, it's about birches. I didn't have birches, well, I probably was swinging on an oak tree. But it's by Robert Frost, one of my favorite poets. I think one reason he looks like a grandpa, and I also love the Northeast. Birches by Robert Frost. When I see birches bend to left and right across the lines of straighter, darker trees, I like to think some boy's been swinging them. But swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as ice storms do. Often you must have seen them loaded with ice, a sunny winter morning after a rain. They click upon themselves as the breeze rises, and turn, in many co and turn many colored as the stir cracks and crazes their enamel. Soon the sun's warmth makes them shed crystal shells, shattering and avalanching on the snow crust. Such heaps of broken glass to sweep away you'd think the inner dome of heaven had fallen. They are dragged to the withered bracken by the load, and they seem not to break. And once they are bowed so low for so long, they never right themselves. You may see their trunks arching in the woods, years, years afterwards, trailing their leaves on the ground like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair before them over their heads to dry in the sun. But I was going to say when Truth broke in, with all her matter-of-fact about the ice storm, 
I should prefer to have some boy bend them as he went out and in to fetch the cows. Some boy too far from town to learn baseball, whose only play was what he found himself, summer or winter, and could play alone. One by one, he subdued his father's trees by writing them down over and over again until he took the stiff, stiffness out of them. And not one, but hung limp. Not one was left for him to conquer. He learned all there was to learn about not launching out too soon and so not carrying the tree away clear to the ground. He always kept his poise to the top branches, climbing carefully with the same pains you used to fill a cup up to the brim and even above the brim. Then he flung outward, feet first, with a swish, kicking his way down through the air to the ground. So was I once myself a swinger of birches, and so I dream of going back to be. And when I'm weary of considerations, and life is too much like a pathless wood, where your face burns and tickles with the cobwebs broken across it, and one eye is weeping from a twig's having lashed it open, I'd like to get away from earth a while and then come back to it again and begin over. May no fate willfully misunderstand me and half grant what I wish and snatch me away not to return. Earth's the right place for love. I don't know where it's likely to get better. I'd like to go by climbing a birch tree and climb black branches up a snow white trunk toward heaven till the tree could bear no more, but dipped its top and set me down again. That would be good, both going and coming back. One could do worse than be a swinger of birches. Thank you.